I've dedicated my life to help you understand. We'll cover the design and features and do a gaming test of this Asus gaming laptop. I'll show you how to upgrade it. I'll be standing by 24 seven to answer all questions related to this machine and other gaming laptops. Up next, we're gonna do a quick unboxing. This one video will answer all of your questions. Currently, there's two different versions being sold in stores right now. You can get the RTX 3000 series version laptops, which is the latest 2021 model with about 10 to 20% performance boost previous year's model with a similar price hike. Or you can get last year's model with RTX 2000 series and save 250 plus dollars. Not bad if you're looking to save, and this isn't even taking into account refurbished or used markets. I have some links to save you money in the descriptions below. The latest 2021 model will include more aggressive color configurations, including pink models, which looks nice. And both the 2021 and 2020 models use liquid metal, so there's no need to repaste your CPU. Although I'll show you how to repaste on the next laptop review. Design-wise, both models look almost identical. I opted for the 2020 model with RTX 2060 because what more could you want? It comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and an SSD and plenty of room for upgrades, which we'll cover in depth at 440. This is of course after we do the gaming test. Ah yes, the unboxing. This does not appear to be what most people are used to seeing. It's almost a bit shocking. Laptop manufacturers will find a way to get you. And it isn't with productivity, but gaming. Gaming seems to be the key to holding people's attention. It will surpass video someday, but will not replace video. Gaming is a highly evolved form of video. It is the key to laptop sales and holding people's attention, which is worth big bucks. The alternative laptop will focus on exceptional balance and craftsmanship, unmatched quality and refinement through continuous improvement process controlling all variables of hardware and software production and design. We'll talk about, quote, this laptop at the end of this video. When you first open up the machine, it's very muted looking when it's off, and its design uses a lot of plastic. Here you can see they highlighted the Wasad keys, really trying to speak to gamers with these aesthetics. Although creatives might be repulsed by this, it will seem like a marketing mask and not real creativity. When the machine is on, it comes to light. It has RGB lighting all around, the keys shift colors in the rainbow pattern, same with LED strip around the perimeter of the machine. It looks nice. It's very Asus Rogue flamboyant. Like if you saw this machine, you would know right away it's a Rogue Strix since it's branded all around. The last time I saw something like this was on the Alienware R5 and it didn't pulsate its colors as smoothly. It's the best RGB implementation we have seen yet. Rogue branding on the back stands out, but I prefer a more muted look of the Rogue Strix logo. The gamer laptop and not specifically this laptop features design techniques from the late 90s and early 2000s, focusing on a flat flashy look. And of course, our Asian brothers have a different story to tell. The emphasis on an external impression is high with this design mindset. That is why I prefer a muted look. It allows me to more maintain my thoughts and also not to disrupt my passerbys with my brand. If we can just get a machine with no logos, that would be nice. 3 USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, an audio port, and a speaker. Would prefer not to have all these Type A ports on one side, since they're so close together. USB devices can block off the ports. Another side firing speaker, two GPU exhaust vents, and an additional perforated vents at the top for maximum cooling in case a vent gets blocked off. That's the overflow. An Ethernet RJ45 LAN port, HDMI, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C, with built in display port, and a power plug. Man, this is awesome. Here I have GTA 5 maxed out with maxed out graphics and it runs so smoothly. I also have the advanced NVIDIA shadow technology enabled. Really love that screen. It aids in the gameplay. If you can get the best video card possible in your configuration, this is the key to building the best gaming experience. Whether you're buying or purchasing a system, optimize around the GPU because it has the highest priority in your selection. This is because the CPU and RAM, SSD, all of these things make little difference if your GPU can't handle it. It's usually the bottleneck. Wanna know more? Skip to the chapters that show you how to select the laptop at 13 minutes. Ooh, I'm right next to them. I got one, he's down. I'm about to get the second guy. It's coming to you. I got the second guy. Oh. The part of the machine is fairly easy. Grab yourself a kit that allows you to dismantle the machine. I use the iFixit because it has all the tools I need and can keep track of screws. When removing the back panel, be very gentle. The plastic can break off. It's all snapped together, and also there are these very thin ribbon cables that can be broken, so be sure to detach them from the plastic shell before removing it. 
On the left, we have a GPU. On the right, we have the CPU. The GPU requires more cooling, hence it has the additional exhaust vent and more heat pipes. Two of the pipes are shared between the machines. This is to allow the fan on the GPU or the CPU when idle to help cool the antagonist. It makes sense to have them be separate since an overheating GPU or CPU could leak its heat to the other processing units. Here we have our two RAM slots. Samsung DDR4 PC4 3200. Usually I upgrade the RAM to 64 gigabytes to help with video editing and productivity. But for gaming, I would revise 16 gigabytes of RAM. So use the RAM upgrade links if you need guidance, links in the description. The speakers are pretty average. If you need good sound, don't get the 2020 model. I hear the 2021 model has much better speakers. Something for you to explore if you care about good sound. Lenovo Legion has surprisingly good sound for a gaming laptop. It has the best balance of quality in a gaming laptop I've seen so far. We have three NVMe slots, which is very impressive. This this is rare to find in a 15 inch laptop and a SATA slot, which is also now becoming rare. Overall, the machine is organized very well for upgrades. Just don't forget about the plastic cover and how fragile it is. When I removed mine, I slightly damaged it even though I used expert tools. There are metal arms that hold the RAM in place. Push the arms moving away from the RAM and the RAM stick should pop up diagonally from the insertion. Watch out for the notch, make sure it's lined up or you risk damaging the slot, or remove the RAM. Once inserted, push down and make sure that the metal arms clasp the RAM stick. If you need help, comment below, I'm always here to help you out. Sometimes RAM is not properly inserted all the way, make sure it's in there. I can't believe they gave us another two NVMe slots. To remove the SSD and put in a new one, just unscrew the single screw and lift the SSD up diagonally. It's similar to the RAM, but it doesn't use arms to hold the SSD in place, but instead a screw. Normally this just lifts up with ease, but because there is a thermal pad below it, it's somewhat sticky. Also there is an anti-conducting back film and heatsink on the top of the SSD. Let's take a closer look. The back film peels off the same with the metallic thermal pad on top. If it comes with it, make sure to put it back on when operating the SSD. It helps keep it cool. I was really interested in knowing what type of SSD they use in this stock machine. Now I see here it says uh, SMI and Nanya modules. Not sure if I have ever used these products before, until now. Installing the module is the same way inverse of how we took it off. Insert diagonally, position, then apply the screw. Trackpad uses Microsoft Precision drivers and feels rather smooth. Didn't have too many issues except for the fact that the trackpad is a bit small and also uses these clicky buttons that have somewhat of a mushy feel. However, I think some people might really like it. I also noticed that the palm rejection doesn't always work. I'm questioning whether it even has it. I get a very old school from this trackpad, yet it has modern drivers but the physical hardware itself seems to be behind somehow. I would like to see an updated version in future models. Remove the physical buttons, save money. Add a larger trackpad to increase its effectiveness and create separate superior drivers that provide for more control and precise clicking. There are already proven platforms that they can get inspiration from. The keyboard works well, looks great, and doesn't seem to have any weaknesses. It is a chiclet keyboard after all, with keys that form an array of small flat rectangular plastic keys. It's not better than Microsoft's chiclet keys and doesn't even begin to compare to a mechanical keyboard, but it is an acceptable level of quality. If you want the best possible keyboard in a laptop, I would advise looking at the Alienware Area 51 M R1. It has the best keyboard I've ever seen in a laptop. I'll leave a link and a card in the top right hand corner if you want to check it out. In terms of RGB lighting, the keyboard itself is the best I've seen, although I would personally prefer a better feel than a flashy look, but to each their own. I really appreciate the volume keys, mic, mute, and max fan speed button. This will help save time. What can I say? A higher 144Hz screen just doesn't compare to a 60Hz screen. 
this would be my third most important thing when selecting a laptop. If you love FPS games, for the love of God, make sure you get a higher hertz screen with 120 plus hertz. You can really tell the difference. When I switched to higher hertz screens, my FPS score doubled instantly. Didn't think something like this was possible. It will never go back. It's the only thing holding me back from getting a Mac since there's no higher hertz screens. Other things to consider. If the screen's at 144 hertz, you should set your game resolution appropriately. My favorite game, Metro Selection 2, which I am giving away free copies of, I set the resolution to 1366 by 768. This is because I want to maintain a constant 144 FPS by reducing the amount of pixels needed to render the image. I also set the FPS cap to 144 because I don't want my machine to work harder to produce more FPS than is capable of being shown on the panel. Hinges. Hinges hide away when you close the laptop, and it is protected from drops because the external parts of the heatsink will get hit first during an accident. Phenomenal work. Plus they got those external vents to help cool the machine, and there's even overflow protection. So parts of the machine are designed really well. What I would like to see is a metallic machine in case it drops and doesn't shatter or crack. I will settle for a dent. They chose plastics obviously to reduce cost, but it may be safer to drop a plastic machine for the internal hardware but not for safer for the overall outside chassis. They would rather shatter and destroy the chassis than harm the hardware inside. It's a trade with costs. They, the brand, would rather pay the costs later to save you a little bit of money now. The long-term consequences of this will be evident. What would you like to trade? Selecting a laptop is capped at the budget that you have available. Opt for the highest attainable budget and you'll get the best machine possible. If you can, follow the principles. You'll need to decide what's important for you. Some people think that speakers are the most important, or a keyboard, and a trackpad are the most important. For those people, they should pick a MacBook. It's the best balance of all worlds. But we aren't here to talk about the best balance because we are gaming and we need the best gaming machine. So if we use this logic, then start by first trying to find a laptop with the best possible video card. You'll find that the sweaty laptop nerds focus strictly on specs and their machines, and thus the machines tend to be ugly and have terrible speakers, terrible trackpads, and terrible keyboard. They might also not have the best looks. But in terms of gaming and value, you can get the best, most capable machine if you pick your budget. Say $700 and then focus on finding the machine the best with the best GPU. Once you have found the machines you like with the video card you like, then your second priority is the CPU. Pick the machine with the best CPU. But if you find yourself in trouble, do I select the better GPU or CPU? Always pick the GPU since it makes the biggest difference in your gaming experience. The GPU is also the component that becomes obsolete first, so picking the highest end configuration of the GPU is important. If you can upgrade one thing in your computer, it's always the GPU since it makes the most meaningful differences. Use websites like Notebook Check and User Benchmarks to compare the performance. Sometimes machines with better specs will perform worse because they have bad cooling. Right now, focus on two variables, the best possible GPU and then the second most important thing, the CPU. Let me know in the comments section below what you pick. If you want, you can throw in more variables, like who has the better screen or the most SSD storage. Really, you're just comparing side by side each machine and then picking the one that has the best hardware. Thanks so much for sticking around, guys. I really appreciate it. I wanted to say thank you. And also, if you can subscribe, if you are a new viewer, it would be awesome to get some more subscribers. I am looking to create the best possible content and I am here for you always. If you need me for anything at all, feel free to contact me. All right, guys, it's been fun. I hope to see you guys in the next video. And remember, if you want a copy of that game, I will send you one. Cheers.